Hello, my name is Frank Juan, and welcome to a special edition of Schools on Point. This half hour, we'll be talking about award-winning education programs in Los Angeles County and how they're helping our students achieve academic success. With me is Dr. Arturo Delgado, the Los Angeles County Superintendent of Schools. He's the county's chief education official, and through the Los Angeles County Office of Education, serves 80 public school districts that educate 2 million preschool and school-aged children. Superintendent Delgado recently honored educators, parents, school board members, and community partners whose programs receive the California School Board Association's Golden Bell Awards this school year. Dr. Delgado, can you let us know why it is that you wanted to recognize these projects uh, that were recognized by CSBA? I'd be glad to, Frank. Uh, the CSBA uh, Golden Bell Award was designed to promote excellence uh, in education and school board governance by recognizing outstanding programs. Uh, it's, it's actually the most prestigious award that a school district program can receive. And uh, so I'm ex extremely proud that 13 programs in our county were among the awardees uh, this last year. Well, we decided to hold a special event called Celebrating Educational Excellence to highlight the successful initiatives uh, in our schools. And we also wanted to recognize the important role schools and programs play in educating our children in Los Angeles County in particular. You know, is, do you think there are enough opportunities to perhaps celebrate the good things that happen here in Los Angeles County? Do we do that enough to say that we recognize the good work that's being done in our schools? No, I don't think there's ever, uh, we, can, we can ever overdo uh, the recognition of good programs. In fact, we do spend a lot of time talking about things that go wrong in our educational system. I don't think we spend nearly as much time in recognizing the great programs. You know, at the event, uh, I understand you had the opportunity to meet the students, everybody behind these programs, including superintendents, school board members, the principals, the people who are really directly involved with that. And I think that uh, what you probably saw was a lot of passion and dedication. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about that, how you felt when you followed well, these people? Well, you have a lot of advocates. Um, you have motivators, volunteers, uh, other leaders, and uh, their efforts to promote educational excellence in their communities just are really inspirational. Uh, for example, some of our awardees talked about uh, the importance of showing love and support uh, to young people, especially those who are really struggling. Uh, these are kids that don't get that in a lot of places, and so these volunteers and advocates give that. Others um, encourage our students to tell their stories and dreams to, uh, to adults uh, to get a better idea how to work with them, and uh, every student has a story, so it's really, really nice to see that. Would you say then that in some respects some of these programs really are, are pretty innovative, these are very special, that these are not just your run-of-the-mill, I wouldn't call them even that, but these are not normal, the, the regular programs you expect to find in a school, but these are really something different that, that reflects a real desire to kind of meet needs of students? Well, our students have a, a, a real tough time fitting in in most cases, and so we do have to try to look for a way to reach these students. Uh, so we think differently, we think outside the box, we try to implement new programs. We, we see actually what is it that they really respond to. And those things that they respond positively to, we, we try to run with that. And uh, so yeah, it does require some creativity. And I think we're going to have a chance to do that because, you know, we visited the awardees who spearheaded mentoring programs, these uh, programs that motivated students to read and provided opportunities for students to explore their talents outside of the traditional classroom. So now we're inviting you to see for yourself how they're helping our students succeed by watching these videos. In fact, they're on our website. And again, these are only three of the 13 awardees. And we'll tell you a little bit about each one before we start. The first one is from ABC Unified School District. It's their JAM Sessions program. And JAM stands for Jaguars in Arts and Media. The next one is from the Alhambra Unified School District's Early College High School Students on Academic Rise, or they just call it SOAR. And finally, one from Montebello Unified School District's Advancement via Individual Determination, or the AVID program. So take a look. One. 
JAM is an opportunity for students to participate in enrichment activities during the school day um, to provide um, excitement and bring some love for learning back into our programs um, to add more to our school than just the reading and the writing and mathematics. We have all kinds of wonderful activities for our kids to do that they would not normally participate in in a normal school day. For example, our custodian is a master ice carver and fruit carver. So he usually does a jam session with our sixth grade students carving fruits. You might see my tech teacher teaching a lesson or doing something with creative movies and iMovie making. As you can tell, I'm dressed in running clothes and I teach a 5K running group and we culminate our session with a 5K run at the end of the session. We're trying to address the whole child, not just the academics here. Academically, maybe they don't excel in reading. Maybe they struggle in math. But yet, they're a great runner. You run with Mrs. Ortiz. Maybe you're academically not strong, but you're a great artist. So it allows them to explore different outside activities in hopes that it becomes the whole child. Our kids look forward to jam session each week that we have it. They, um, our attendance is much better because we have jam. Uh, we don't have kids being checked out early on Friday any longer. The kids won't let their parents check them out. Teachers love it because they get to take their expertise and bring it into the classroom, what they love to do. Um, and the kids begin to see the teachers as real people, not just those people up there teaching them day in and day out. Angles that you hit. Make them sharp, make them pretty. No, that's it. It's about working with other students, um, cross level, older kids helping out little kids, being the friend to them. That's what I love about Jam Session is that ability for the kids just to have fun. Students can have an awful day and then go to Jam and have the best afternoon and go home with a smile on their face and it's that smile on the face that makes it all worthwhile. The pure joy that you see um, on the students faces and for me as a principal my teachers faces um, to see them just loving teaching and loving interacting with the kids is, is just far beyond anything that I could have ever imagined. Soar High School is an early college high school. It's for underrepresented youth, low socioeconomic, and there are many other criteria that uh, fit students that would want to come here. And it's to remove the barriers that cause some students not to be able to go to a four-year university. The goal of the program is to, to make sure our students uh, get the academic rigorous courses to go on to a four-year university and be successful in completers of a four-year university. The thing that's great about this program is that there's been a culture that's been established here by the staff as well as the students over the last few years, um, a culture of excellence really in education. Um, and it stems from really a, uh, a, a commitment to hard work. Um, not only do the staff model that um, by you know having multiple clubs, they do multiple subjects that they teach, but the students understand that coming in, that they have to work pretty hard. But the students when they get here, they know that they're college students and high school students, and it's gonna take a lot of work to be successful. Successful. Three, two, one. One of the best things about SOAR is that it's able to provide all of these unique opportunities, all because of a shared goal of providing kids who basically have a very small chance of succeeding in other environments are able to go to high school and actually take college classes. Um, I feel that because it's a so small school, everyone knows everyone, and I feel like I'm a part of a family here. And it's great. I know everybody. They know me. We're all very good friends. Sora showed me that there are many opportunities out there for me to go and grab, and that I don't have to limit myself to one thing that I want to do in life. They're achieving things that when they come in, they don't think they can do. But because of the relationships and the encouragement, they're able to do it, and, and when they graduate, it's like they're invincible. They can do anything. SOAR makes me feel prepared and ready for my future.
Well, the, girl, the goal of our AVID system that we have at Bell Gardens High School is to, um, to provide a college-going culture for our students. We want all of our students to be college and career ready. We started AVID uh, back in 1998, so we've had AVID uh, about 15 years now. When we started the program, we started with one, uh, one section. We're at up to 18, so we have, serviced, we have gone from servicing 1% of our population to about 20% of our population. The boys meet with a male tutor, the girls with a female tutor. They go ahead, they bring in questions that they're um, kind of perplexed with through the night before, and then they go ahead and discuss it and do a presentation in a round robin forum, and they go through it each, each, each student. So you get about two or three per class, but it's really a support basis, but it's guided and geared by the students. Trying to ideally teach them to have study sessions. Our tutors are like a mild intervention and also like a facilitator more than anything. They come back, they summarize, they have to feed back off of each other and give the outline of what they did and what they um, were able to accomplish and where their moments were to improve on. I feel proud of being in the AVID program because like I see my grades going up from like C's to B's and A's. So I thank them and like I feel proud of myself. Brianna, how many years have you been in AVID? For six years. Six years? Yes. And so you were in AVID in your intermediate school? Yeah. It's, it's a pleasure to be able to help the students, not only academically, but also like personally. Every single student is a, it's a story, different story, and you need to be connected with the students. If you're not connected enough, they're, it's not going to take you as you don't care. But the point is weaker. If weaker, they're going to do what they have to. Growing up, I never saw myself doing something, a job like this, and coming here to work, I really learned a lot about myself. I really enjoy helping people, and it gives me a great feeling. Like I will go out, outside of my way I will stay after school if a student needs me to just to help them. It's a real good feeling that I get, you know, working here and work, seeing students succeed and they're going to come back to me hopefully saying they get to the college that they wanted. It's just really nice being able to, to be in a, a, a kid's life, in a teenager's life and, and telling them, you know what, you can do it. Us who have been there a couple of years back, we can tell them, you know what, we did it. We're in college now. You can do it too. As Superintendent Delgado has said, the Golden Bell winners truly inspire us to see that we can make a huge difference in the lives of our students. We're now joined by Adana Velasquez, a multi-awarded educator who is one of the key people behind the Road to Success Academy here at the Los Angeles County Office of Education and one of those 13 winners. She's a former Los Angeles County Office of Education Teacher of the Year and Los Angeles County Bilingual Directors Association Outstanding Teacher. She's the director of our Road to Success Academies, or RTSA. Now, before we ask Diana about RTSA, let's see what the program actually looks like. The population of girls that we have uh, are not, not engaged in school, have probably not attended school for three to five years. Many of them have been abused physically, emotionally, about 90% of them. So curriculum just uh, by itself wasn't doing the job basically. They needed something else. Three years ago, we developed a very unique and innovative program uh, which involved curriculum for incarcerated girls. This curriculum was very specific in terms of using social emotional themes, interdisciplinary and project based learning. What we found out very quickly was that it was the key to get the girls engaged. The way we're doing things here with the uh, what we call the tip approach uh, gives them a new breath into education where they're really able to get hands on with the project and then therefore once they're having the opportunity to get creative they, they really open up to the, to the learning aspects. We do go through themes like power and empowerment, hope, transformation, and new beginnings. It's basically the cycle that the school wants to see for the girls. And here we made paintings, different paintings on how the scenes of the jazz era made a difference to how to say, other ethnicities too. They like jazz, that's how other relations and music started coming up. We also created poems about hope. Then we talk about all around the world about what do other people see as beauty. For our theme, Power and Empowerment, we got to purchase stocks. We had a hundred and thought we had a hundred thousand dollars. When you're able to create a project that they love, they also open up because they can see the connections between their lives and what they're doing in education. 
We want them to be able to reconnect with education, but also reflect on their own capabilities, what they're able to do. I learned more as to how smart I am. Like, I learned more as to, like, what I could really do sober. Like, you know, I feel awesome. I really do. Once you start seeing those connections and you see them start believing in themselves, you know, as a teacher of at-risk youth, that, that's what you want to see because then you can see the hope. It takes a lot of work, it takes teacher collaboration to do this, it takes probation support to do this, but overall we're very, very proud of the curriculum that we've developed for this population and uh, proud of the successes of our students and what we're seeing in them. Well, that was pretty impressive. Dr. Delgado, how does this make you feel in terms of how our teachers, our own administrators, and our staff um, are doing with RTSA, the Road to Success Academies? Well, we're very proud of our successes, um, not only of our staff, but of our students in particular. Uh, but I also want to congratulate Diana and thank her for all the hard work that she's put into this and the commitment and the support that she's put into our students and our teachers and uh, all that's uh, a part of what's in order to make the road to success work. And so thank you, Diana, for your great work. And, and I've seen firsthand the enthusiastic uh, responses of our teachers and administrators and staff to learn and implement this new program because it takes a lot of work and a lot of planning. And uh, it's been a thrill for me to see that the type of energy that teachers and administrators are putting into this. So, Diana, can you give us an update on where we are with the road to success? Sure. Uh, first, Dr. Delgado, I want to thank you for your leadership, uh, for being with us there every step of the way, and for making improvements at our juvenile court schools your top priority. Uh, that has been quite a role model for us. And as we continue the program, I'm excited to share that the uh, students keep growing in their learning. Uh, we uh, tested students for KC recently, mm -hmm. and uh, 10 out of the 11 students passed the KC yeah. test. Uh, we also uh, had six GED testers pass, all six of them passed, so 100% passage rate. Um, we also continue to test them every 60 days, and every 60 days they show us improvement in reading and math. Um, we're now also hearing a lot of our students leave us and say that they want to pursue college. Yeah. Many of them are enrolling in community colleges. So it's been incredible. It's, it's a really exciting time for us. And, um, I'm also very excited to share that we are going to roll out the Road to Success Academy model in uh, four of our probation camps. So it will be rolled out at Gonzales, Miller, Munz Mendenhall, and McAuliffe Challenger. So in the 2014-15 school year, uh, these sites will be fully engaged in this innovative instructional program that addresses the distinct needs of our students and our population within juvenile court schools. So from your experience, Diana, you, you developed this out of a single program, mm -hmm. but you've seen elements that can be, in a, what, replicated across other schools, other sites as well? Is that because you've seen the benefits? Is that why it moved you to kind of make sure that we actually take a successful program and begin to roll this into other areas as well? Definitely. I think what we saw very quickly was, uh, as I said, the engagement of students. When, when they see the relevance of the curriculum, our population really hooks on to that curriculum. And as a result, they, um, they are ready and willing to uh, tackle complex text. And in doing that, every time they're learning and they're growing, they're learning not only educationally, their growth, but they're also learning um, and growing social emotionally. They're finding things about themselves that they didn't know before. And it's really, really exciting. The students tend to help each other in this process, as well as the teachers help each other, because we are all just very excited at seeing the positive outcomes that we get each and every time. Is it on the basis of these positive outcomes you've seen, Dr. Delgado, that encourages you to begin to look at a long-term plan to implement this throughout all of our court schools here at Los Angeles County Office of Education? Definitely. Uh, we, we want all of our JCS students to benefit from the program. And as you know, we serve about 1,800 uh, incarcerated and at-risk youth uh, daily in about 13, uh, in 13 sites countywide. So we do definitely want to see this spread. Uh, we will be the first county in the country that could do this. So that's the goal.
This is a pretty innovative program then. Do you think it's the right formula to particularly engage this population of students which have traditionally been one of the more difficult to try to engage and, and try to get them involved in, in education programs? Well, we think so, but the data will tell. And I think you heard some great results uh, that Diana had mentioned with us on just the improvements so far that we've seen uh, relative to uh, kids who are uh, graduating from, uh, from our programs, who, who, who are testing much at a much better rate. Uh, but beyond that, we're seeing a drop in referrals. The behavior of students in, in these camps has changed. Uh, the students themselves seem to be very enthusiastic about the program. They, they, they are able to communicate what they like about the program, and, and we've seen a real change in their um, participation in a good number of these uh, academic programs that at one time they had no interest in. Mm -hmm. So if we, we continue to see that and we see the uh, testing measurements on the rise and graduation and students getting their GEDs and diplomas, then that'll tell us. That'll tell us. And, and right now, we're headed in that direction. Uh, we're seeing some great results already. So we're very pleased. Now, Diana, you've seen firsthand what happens with RTSA because you've been there, you're when I say, on the ground, you're right there in the classroom. And we talked a lot about making sure we have good data that shows how effective it is. But I also hear you talking about what happens with the students in, in a sense where they say when that light goes on in their eyes, how does that make you feel, you know, to see that something that you're doing gets this kind of benefit for these kids? It's, a, it's an incredible feeling. We all believe in the capacity of our students. We all believe in their potential. And when you look in their eyes and you begin to see that they believe in their own capacity, that they believe in their own potential, that is like nothing else. It's, it's, you know, it's worth a million bucks, I guess you could say. Uh, and so that's what keeps us going. This is very hard work, honestly. It requires that teachers really prepare and investigate and research what they're going to do and devote their entire selves. But it is very, very rewarding work. And so we are all up to the task because we want to see them realize that potential. This takes a certain amount of effort, doesn't it, Dr. Delgado? We're talking about training, really, to get our staff, our teachers, our administrators behind our TSA so they can do the kind of job that Dan is talking about. It does, and it really, the training comes after the belief system sets in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really have appreciated the way uh, teachers and administrators have embraced that belief system. Without that, then the training means nothing because you can train, go back, and if you don't believe in something, it, it gets put on a shelf someplace. Uh, but the belief system starts first, mm -hmm. and then the program can be very effective. But you've been able to kind of, because you're building on a program that you already have, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier, isn't it, to say, it's easier to believe in it because you can say, look at what's been going on. How much effort has that taken in terms of being able to, to demonstrate how effective the program can be? Sure, I think having a model that exists where people can look towards that and say, they tried this and it worked, um, is very helpful, especially for our teachers, our administrators, and all of our staff. What we're seeing is, our staff, our teachers, they've all really become a family, helping each other and supporting each other and uh, looking to each other for expertise. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing, it, being able to have a model to look towards. Anything you'd like to add to that, Dr. Delgado? Well, I think the uh, Road to Success Academy is a good example of what can actually take place uh, uh, to scale. And I think we're proving it can be done thanks to the work that Diana Velasquez is doing and all of those that are working um, with her team and uh, everyone at the school, but uh, we're seeing students respond and for us that's the reward, that, that's the payoff for us. So as uh, we see that happen throughout the county, I think we can show that the great things are yet to come. Well, thank you both. There's so much more we could talk about, of course, but we have come to the end of the program. We also want to remind you, of course, that this RTSA program is, again, one of the 13 that was recognized with the Golden Bell, and congratulations Thanks. again, Diana. And that those 13 are all on our website, and that's at www.lacoe.edu. Now, this program, Schools on Point, is brought to you by the Los Angeles County Office of Education, a public agency dedicated to serving students, supporting communities, and leading educators. For questions, comments, or suggestions, you can email, email us at the address that's on the screen right now. 
So on behalf of the Los Angeles County Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Arturo Delgado, and our special guest, Diana Velasquez, I'm Frank Juan. Until our next Schools on Point, thank you for joining us. Thank you.